Hey everyone, so I'll chat back in the video, and today I wanted to go over the talent system, which is one of the most important, as well as one of my favorite systems in the game. It's going to be this little spire over here. We're going to go over the two different types of talents, how you're going to acquire them, and what the general strategy is to progress to get the most value out of the system. Let's jump into it. So when we enter the talent tree here, uh, we're going to see a bunch of different tabs and some on the side and all that good stuff. You'll see the four different types of affinities here, red, blue, green, and force. In the top right, you'll see the different currencies, um, each one of a different rarity, and then as well as a different color. And then in the class talent tree, you'll see different uh, support, attack, and defense, the classes of the game, as well as a uh, kind of a linear progression, whereas the mark kind of has a four choice option here in regards to what choice you want to pick. Now you click the eye in the top left to discover uh, what the game tells you about it. Um, the very basics are each one of these affinities uh, in the tabs is going to affect the corresponding affinity characters and the class talents will affect the corresponding class characters. Now, if you do happen to want to change anything, you can hit this reset button down here and return for a decent amount of diamonds. The first reset is free and then it goes up in diamonds then. So make sure you make the right choice or if you mess up once, make sure you make a reset and then make the right choice the second time. Now, where can you see what characters are getting affected by what? Well, you can see here each character has a couple of icons on the right hand side. The holder here is one we're going to pay attention to today. Uh, he's got an attack type character with a force mark, which means if we increase either one of those, he's going to increase his stats here. So let's just keep track of his stats here. We have 148,000 HP, 15,000 attack, uh, 11,500 defense, and a 100 uh, or 1,172 speed. So if we go back into the talent tree and just go ahead and go to the force mark, you can see here we have unlocked the level two. We're going to go ahead and upgrade the attack rate here with uh, plus 0.3%, go back over to holder, and you could see hopefully a, a sizable increase here. We didn't gain that much attack, you could see here, but it was only 0.3%. We have a lot of upgrades to make. Um, so definitely, definitely going to go ahead and uh, check that out again. If we go ahead and check the information here, or rather the equipment, you can see the base stats as well as the equipment stats here. So you can see 8,065. So if we go ahead and just go ahead and increase that attack yet again with the uh, second level here, this will determine whether or not the stat is actually increasing off of the base stat or if it's increasing off of the uh, total stats. So let's go back into the equipment here. And this can show you, you can see here we have 8,065. So it's actually increasing the uh, overall stat based on the attack base stat. So it doesn't actually increase the base attack stat. It just gives you more attack based on your base stat, <laughs> uh, which means if you in awaken your characters, if you level them up, you're going to get extra base attack, which means your marks are actually going to increase the stats that you actually gain. Now, if you have flat stats, it doesn't matter at all. So keep that in mind. Now, um, if we go ahead and just go back into the talent tree and increase the class talent for the attack type character, you go ahead and drop one right here. And you'll see here for holder that we should increase our attack by a hundred. Um, if we go into the equipment, you'll see yet again, it does not increase the base attack. It increases the overall attack and it's increased by a hundred. So that is pretty much to determine which characters are going to get which uh, talent upgrades. It's pretty self-explanatory, uh, but more importantly than that, how do we get these marks and how do we get these class talents? Well, first off, the marks are a specific dungeon mode where you're going to have to go ahead and go through the Tower of Mark and use the specific affinity according to whatever mark you're trying to get. The Force Marks can only be attempted by Force characters. The Blue Marks can only be attempted by uh, Blue characters. Uh, green Marks can only be attempted by Green mar uh, characters. And Red Marks can only be attempted by Red characters. The second type of talents are actually obtained by arena battles. So if we go into the classic arena here and we were happen to do a battle, um, we could get access to additional of the books. Uh, let's see if there's a battle here that we would like to try out and see if we can beat. Uh, most of these look decently tough. We'll go ahead and try for this one, see if we can go ahead and just beat this real quick. The higher you are in arena, the more higher quality of resources that you will get to upgrade your um, talents. So that's super important because climbing arena is not something that you should be neglecting. It is giving you overall stats for PvE and PvP content and honestly is 
although I haven't done stage 30 dungeons, probably crucial that you actually have those talents upgraded for when you actually end up in that scenario. So hopefully this battle will go over a little bit quick, uh, that way we can go ahead and access what we actually got as a reward. And we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, what kind of stat you should be prioritizing. Should we go ahead and stick with the first level, or should we progress into the second level of the talent tree, or should we try to progress into the third level of the talent tree, because each one gives you different uh, upgrades. So we finally ended up beating it, Magus took a while to kill off there. You can see here we have the Advanced Attack Talent Tome. These are for attack uh, talents. Now you can get a random one. I'm not sure which one it selects after end of the arena. I believe it's random. I haven't really noticed anything different with that. And that's how you're going to go ahead and get the uh, totems in order to upgrade these talents. Now, in regards to what I was saying, there are different kind of tiers in regards to the force uh, marks and the class talents. The class talents are more of a linear progression. You have to get 10 levels in the previous one before you advance to the second one, which you can see here we actually have unlocked. I can go ahead and just jump into the support tree and just dump some books into this first tier, which you have to to unlock the second tier anyways. And you'll see here it's unlocked the defense portion now. And we can keep going and you have to do 10 levels in the previous one to unlock the next one. The mark talents are a little bit different. You have a four different choices, and you have to get a combined total of 40 levels in the previous one. So you can see here I have uh, 10, 13, 8, and 9, which totals up uh, to 40 in order for us to go ahead and access the next tier. And this first one is all flat stats, uh, flat stats in regards to kind of boring stats. The second tier is percentage stats of the stats in the previous tier. And then the third one, uh, for the marks at least, um, you are going to actually end up getting some unique stats like crit rate, critical damage, effect hit, and effect resistance. In the class talents, you'll have to go ahead and progress the tree to get to those percentage stats with healing effect, um, effect hit. It changes based on the type of character. Attack will have crit rate, crit damage. Um, defense will have uh, effect resistance, things like that. Now, Really, the class talents are very self-explanatory. I'd recommend just progressing through the tree. Obviously, if you're a defense type unit, you get through the first tier as fast as you possibly can, get to the defense, and you can stack a bunch in defense, or you could kind of try to progress further into getting this defensive percentage, um, and then maybe later on the effect resistance and uh, the damage resistance, which is an ex exceptional upgrade. The attack is the same idea. You're going to want to rush the crit rate one as fast as possible, in my opinion. Um, this is going to give you the most value because critting in this game, crit rate rather, is hard to come by, and I believe it's hard to come by because of this specific uh, talent support obviously uh, the effect hit is really solid if you have a, a debuffing support HP rate percentage is always solid speed is always good because you can lap people and speed is always good now for the mark talent it's a much much different because you can allocate your resources as much as you possibly want now it's important to note that the price of these is going to increase you can see here I have the level two marks. If we go on and check here, I don't have to spend 90 of the level two marks to upgrade from 13 to 14, which will give me uh, an additional 100 attack. Now, we already did the kind of math here on the character holder. He has a base attack of about 8,000, which means if you're getting 0.3%, uh, let's just jump back into holder here and look at his base attack. So we have 8,000 attack, 0.3% of that is actually extremely, extremely low. 1% uh, is 80 roughly, which means 0.3% is even less. It's going to put you at around the 30 mark, um, the 25 to 30 extra attack, which is exceptionally low. So it's actually not super great to invest into the percentage stats unless you've upgraded your character even more. Let's say you take Holder, for example, to awaken like level five you get some exclusive in uh, exclusives into him and he ends up having 10,000 uh, a base attack i'm not sure what his stats are when you max ascend him if we awaken here and just click on here you can see that his stats are going to go up to 8,500 that's usually an additional 500 once you get to them level 140 which means that at awaken level five i'm guessing he'll be about a 10,000 base attack which means that 0.3 percent is still not doing all that much it's doing about 30. 
Uh, it's about doing 30 extra attack, which is still a third of, your get of what you're getting from the flat stat. So although the percentage stats may seem better, it actually seems to me that you're actually getting less from the percentage stats than you are from the base stats. Obviously, if you look here on the HP and the defense, the HP is giving you an extra 1,000 HP. The HP percentage, rather, is getting 0.3%. So if we were just to compare that on a tankier character, um, something like uh, Sintin here, uh, he has a base HP without any awakens, keep that in mind, of 43,000, which means 10% um, of that is 4,300, which means 0.3% uh, of that is extremely low because 1% is 43 or 4, 430, which means it puts you at around the ballpark of 150, 180 HP at 0.3%, which is way worse than the 1,000 base HP. Even if you were to look at someone with like Holder here with the uh, higher base HP, obviously the tankier characters will have more. We have 92,000. Again, 1% of that is like 920, which puts the 0.3% at around the 300 mark. Um, and that is much lower than the base HP. So although this looks tempting, this base stats, uh, flat stats, is actually overall way better. Now the question is, how much does this cost? Does this scale up to the same point as this one? Well, we can go ahead and just try it out here. If I don't like it, I can just go ahead and reset it afterwards. If we just go ahead and increase the uh, price here for a couple of upgrades you can see here it did increase and i imagine once you reach that level um approximately level uh 13 it'll be about the same price now the question is do we want to go ahead and invest into this level two in order to get access to the level three because i do believe that the level three is better than the level one and level two due to the fact that you have the unique elements in crit rate and crit damage for the marks which is very very important in order for you to get the max damage that you're looking for the question is, um, how long will it take you to actually get to that point? Um, is it better to invest into this level one? Keep in mind that these level ones are now harder to upgrade, but they're also significantly better than you might think in regards to the level two. I think that the proper course of action is to go ahead and stack those level ones, get um, a decent amount, get to that level 40, go ahead and transfer to level two, get 40 in the previous circle and hit level three as fast as possible. What that means is getting all of these four equally to level 10, that's gonna be the lowest amount of cost in regards to marks. You're gonna get access to this crit rate and the crit damage. I believe that the crit rate is more valuable, especially when you're running uh, these damage dealers with high attack already. 100 attack or, or 30 attack or whatever matters so much less when you're talking about the numbers that we're talking about. Um, you know, if you were to completely max out the, the flat attack, you'd get an extra 1600 attack. If we really look at the comparison here, 1600 attack on holder right now is an extra 10% attack. Now, if you were to invest all those points into crit rate, crit damage, you're going to get much, much more value out of that. So I highly suggest that you're going to go for those stats instead. Now for the kind of the defense and the, uh, supporting characters, you kind of, ignore the level three to be honest if you have let's say uh, my blue mark for example has a sentin i don't have any uh, aoe damage dealers or anything like that in a blue mark besides christian and i'm not going to be using him so i focused on defense here and i don't really care about effect hit um, or effect resistance currently because i'm in pve i generally have enough effect hit to land my debuffs which means that i'm fully focusing on this defense enhancement because he's a defense based damage dealer i do not care about the level three i think that the real advantage of level three is the crit rate and crit damage obviously when you start doing dungeons when you start going to pvp effect hit and effect resistance start to get much more valuable but in pve i believe that the flat the, the actual stats crit rate crit damage attack defense hp and speed are the ones you're going to want to focus on so depending on what character you have in the specific marks is what you're going to have to work on um, and in the class talents you could do the same thing the percentage stats um, are really really solid but if you do not care about them uh, like the attack stat has the uh, crit rate crit damage which is really really important the support has the uh, i believe the effect hit 
And so if you have a debuffer, that's really, really important. But if you're looking for the HP percentage or things like that, it's just worse than the flat stats oftentimes. And this is, an even, this is assuming that you have your characters awakened three, four, five times. We're not even talking about the characters that aren't awakened at all. If they're not awakened, then you get so much more value out of the flat stats than you do out of the percentage stats. So that's pretty much the overall guide on talents. I just want to give you the information on how to acquire them, what to go about, and how to start thinking about them. Um, normally, you look at percentage stats in gotcha games and you see those. Even myself, my first thought process was to go for the attack percentage, the HP percentage, the defense percentage. Uh, but the flat stats are just better oftentimes, especially if you have not awakened your characters. Hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully this gives you an idea on what you, sh you should be upgrading. Let me know what you think about the talent system in the comments down below. It's one of my personal favorite systems. I really enjoy getting that sense of progression uh, that you can actually see with your own eyes uh, rather than just farming gear and then getting an arbitrary gear and maybe it'll roll bad or maybe it won't. I really enjoy the talent tree. Let me know what you think of that in the comments down below and I will see you for the next one.